What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic for another sort of interesting creation and a lot of you may or may not recognize this behind me here and this is actually uh, not by me but this is by a creator named Som uh, and I, I believe he's a Russian gentleman but uh, I'll post a link to his YouTube channel down below but this was on top of the workshop for a while and uh, it's, it's a little bit laggy but it's a vehicle that actually uses a proper engine with pistons and, uh, and it uses a series of gears at the back here to move it forward and then you can press 3 and switch into the reverse gear and it just it does that with one simple drive gear uh, coming off the main crankshaft there and then of course you know the other the gears meshing in the back there so it's it's a pretty neat creation it works quite well you know it actually gets pretty good traction up the hills here you can see it jerks a little bit because of the spacing between the gears but overall a really well done creation he's also made a few other cool creations so i would go check them out as well but uh, after seeing this creation on the workshop i thought you know what the time has come I have to finally get around to the one project I've always talked about doing and never done, and that is to build an actual car. And and so in order to do that, I figured there's going to be four main parts to the car. One is going to be the engine, which of course is going to be similar to that with the pistons going up and down. Uh, the second will be the transmission coming from the engine uh, going to the wheels. The third will be the differential, which handles the, the wheels, uh, the power coming from the uh, transmission to the wheels, and then the fourth portion would be the, the CV joints and the suspension. So when I was thinking about this product, the first thing I thought of is, all right, well, the first thing a car is gonna need is a clutch, and the clutch is gonna allow you to get a neutral gear and a non-neutral gear, and I came up with this simple clutch mechanism. Now, this would be your simulated gearbox. Obviously, this is a very terrible chunk of gears, and I know before people ask, there are uh, gears in the mods and all that, but I wanted to do this entire car build in just pure vanilla parts. So I, I clued in that this is actually a pretty good clutch. You see there, we have throttle control over this, and this shaft here would come from the engine. And then it can mesh in there nicely, and the suspension keeps it meshed. You can see there, and sometimes it'll skip out, but overall, it'll still deliver relatively consistent power uh, through that connection. So I figured, you know, that's a good way to make a clutch. An actual clutch uses two friction plates, uh, kind of not like this at all, but you know, it, it, I tried originally with two friction plates. If we try and like hit these plates together, nothing happens, and, the, and I was kind of disappointed with this, because you know, the suspension you can see there is almost fully compressed, but the one just spins on the other, it doesn't deliver any power, so... Definitely gonna have to do a clutch that's sort of got these gear pieces and uh, that'll be good. But then, the, of course, the clutch delivers power to the gearbox and we'll, we'll have to handle the gearbox later, but then it delivers power to the differential. Now, a differential is on every car and what a differential does is it allows your two tires to both receive power, but also to spin at different speeds. And so how it works is if we actually look at this differential, we're only powering this yellow arm. And I'll show you here, if we disconnect the yellow arm, and we'll just take this out here on the lift. Then you see there, if we, if we use the gas, we're only powering that yellow arm. The wheels aren't connected at all. There's a free floating bearing in here, uh, but it just powers the yellow arm. And the suspension there is actually just to continue the axle. So we can't have an axle that goes all the way through this. And so the suspension allows you to have the pivot point here and to go around to these gear teeth. Of course, the controllers there, they're just simply for when this is on a lift, you can see there they're aimed down. So if we replace this piece here, you can see there the controllers keep the teeth out of the way of each other. And then when we take that off the lift, uh, like so, you can see there the controllers spin the teeth up and that makes these now act as gear teeth. This is a completely open differential and uh, what that means is this is basically unwelded bearing here. So each wheel will spin completely independently of the other. The wheel with, with the least amount of traction is going to receive the most power. The wheel with the least resistance receives the most power, if that makes any sense. And the idea being that when you're going through like the uh, corner, your inside tire actually needs to spin less than the outside tire. So if we activate the throttle now, you can see there, because the weight is even on both sides of the tires, this gear tooth mechanism here will drive and it will spin no problem. It'll spin both tires at the same rate. And that works out pretty well. And you can see there the gear just sits there free floating in the middle, but both tires are essentially spinning at the same rate. Now, if we take one tire and we lock it, just by putting a beam down like so. You'll see the tire will continue to spin, but when it hits the ground, now that gear tooth will just completely rotate around the tire. And this is a differential. So the one tire gets locked, it gets stuck, let's say in the dirt. So now we're delivering all the power to the free tire. 
which is, you know, it's useful in some cases, it's also terrible in others, but this is essentially how a differential works. So as your car goes around a corner, when that inside tire turns less, the outside tire can turn more. And we can speed this up and it actually works quite well, but I find it just looks beautiful in Scrap Mechanic. Amazing. It's so fluid in Scrap Mechanic and those, those pieces, uh, they really don't give you that much uh, extra room. So how this would hook into a gearbox is this yellow beam would actually be on a big circular gear and then that would go out to the gearbox, which we'll eventually have to do. And these wheels would actually be mounted to CV joints and they would lean off and go down to the suspension and everything else. But this is essentially how your differential works. So a really cool mechanism and uh, really happy to be able to recreate it in Scrap Mechanic. Now, of course, I put it on a car with a gas engine just to see how it would work with a gas engine. And uh, quite well, you can see. I think it does lose a little bit of traction sometimes. You can see where the yellow arm skips there. I think it's just the collisions. Uh, it's the pipe sliding through the other pipe piece. But overall, a pretty decent vehicle. Now, there's no suspension on it, but uh, it takes corners very smooth because the inside tire actually slows down for the outside tire there to speed up. And that'll happen all the time. And quite, quite awesome how it works. But there is one problem with an open differential, and it makes for a much smoother driving experience, which is why cars use them. It, it prevents tire wear on the outside tires, and it allows you to get out of sti sticky situations. But you can see the problem with an open differential is that if there's a free tire, all the power gets delivered to the free tire. If you can get the tire up in the air like this, you can see there as we're trying to go backwards, all the power or most of the power is actually being delivered to that freewheel, which is just, you know, hanging up on the edge. And that's not really a good thing to have in this situation because although it helps with turning, uh, you want power to be delivered more to both wheels. Now, most cars in real life handle this with what's called a limited slip differential. And it's a differential that basically guarantees a minimum amount of power to either of the wheels. Um, this differential doesn't do that. For example, if we take this beam again and we put it on this back tire, as soon as that differential gets forward, you can see that tire will completely lock up and it'll just completely spin freely and it'll only spin the one tire. And then when we go backwards, the same thing. Now, the solution, of course, would be to have a fixed differential, in which case, what's the point of having a differential? But if we just set a controller to that bearing so it's not allowed to rotate, then no matter what, okay, I guess this beam is just a little too long. But no matter what, it will keep trying to rotate there, both both tires, and eventually it will overcome that. In Scrap Mechanic, you'd put two bearings, one on either side, but I think with the two bearings, you're technically getting more speed on the inside wheel through the corner than you are on the outside wheel through the corner. And I'm not sure how that's going to play in. Uh, I'm really curious once I get a full-scale car. Since we can't do a limited slip mechanism, we want to be able to lock the differential we're driving. And so I built this car, which is basically the same frame. Now, it's got a few extra features. Um, it's got modded wheels, but the rest of the car is vanilla. And I will make the whole car in vanilla. And I'll upload this to the workshop with barrels for wheels. Uh, I just thought the modded wheels looked a little bit better and gave a little bit better traction. But this car has the differential. So you can see there the differential mechanisms in there. It's also got this number two uh, switch here, which activates those red caution blocks. And that'll lock the differential. So you see it'll wedge those caution blocks into that arm. And now that arm is completely straight. Um, this one also uses an electric motor. I found it gave better torque on, on the acceleration side of things. It'll be very curious once this gets hooked in through a gearbox to a piston engine. Um, but overall, just, you know, locking the differential. And then, of course, we can unlock that and get the normal differential functions. And with the with the with these tires and the electric motors, you can really see it behave. Uh, like when you take the corners there, the inside tire really will slow down. And it's, it's just quite awesome that the physics actually work. And then, of course, the other thing that this vehicle has is having a differential allows you to actually put a parking brake on your axles. So if you hold the one key there, it'll lock that back axle up. So I plan on doing something similar to that when I actually get around to, to putting a whole car together. Obviously, the cars have to be very largely scaled as the differential already takes up this much width. Um, just getting, you know, wheels and CV joints and all that is going to take up a lot more width. So we're definitely going to have to have a very large car. This thing does have a fair amount of weight, too, underneath it. I found that helps kind of keep the speed up. But I'm not going to make this front-wheel drive. I would need a whole other load of stuff. All right, so let's climb over this, no problem. This is with a diff on. You can see that left tire is spinning like crazy. Now the right tire. Depending on which one's off the ground, it starts spinning up. And the other one just kind of sticks. So you can see there, This is we're not going to climb very well here. But it's delivering power to the, the wheel that needs it. Or the wheel that's open. But now if we lock this. Lock the differential. 
and now no matter what it'll deliver the same power to both wheels and we'll just conquer the obstacles kind of i mean this vehicle obviously there is definitely a little bit of loss of power when it comes through the differential because of the speed that scrap mechanic handles things and i'm curious to see how fast i can actually get that differential spinning but uh overall i just wanted to try and make a car project that uh, has all the different features of a car, or at least, you know, the driving features of it that helps make it, you know, have a couple of gears on it, uh, have the differential, have the proper suspension mechanisms and all that. So make sure you guys hit that like button down below, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I'm definitely gonna continue building this car. It's gonna be bigger than this. This is just the proof of concept, but uh, I will upload this to the workshop, so make sure you check it out. I'll put the barrels on it so you don't have to have any mods for it but it does look a little bit better with the modded wheels. Make sure you guys hit those buttons down below, and as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all next time.